Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add a transition to your video inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So right now I'm on the edit page, and as you can see in the timeline, I have two video clips here. And there is this break between the two clips. So on one side, you have this clip of the city, and on the left, you have this clip of a forest. Now, if you want to add a transition between the two clips, you may notice on the break here, if I left click, that it's red on both sides. So if I go up to the effects menu, where the transitions are going to be located, so that's this button right up here at the top, and then we go down to video transitions, and I try to drop one in, like a basic cross dissolve, and I try to drop it on the border between two clips, which is normally how you add a transition, you may notice that it doesn't actually add anything. So in order to add a transition, there has to be a little bit of extra video buffer from the source clip that is not being used on the timeline, because during the transition, it's going to use that extra half a second or second of footage. So to add a transition properly, I'm gonna go into this trim mode and pull in on the sides of these two clips. So you'll see when I pull to the left, this border turns green and there's a white box that appears right to the right. That's showing the extra video information that is not being used on the timeline, but exists on the source file. So to add our transition properly, we're going to need to pull on the right side too. So I'm going to click over here, hovering just to the right of that line, the cut line, and pull this to the right. So you left click, you hold down, and then you drag to the right. And then that's going to be trimming this side of the clip. So now if I left click on the line between them, it's green on both sides. And that should mean as long as there's enough video buffer there, they will be able to add a transition. So now if I drag across this all from over here onto the border between our two clips, you'll see this little white box appear. So this white box is going to be the transition. If I let go of my left mouse click, that's going to put the transition between the two clips. So let's go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look at this. Also expand this video track. So now it should be really clear where this transition is located. So this transition, it sits on top of a video track and is gonna be transitioning from one clip on that track to another one. Let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. So a simple cross dissolve. So to show what it looks like without the cross dissolve, I can left click on the transition and in the inspector top right hand corner, you can click to open that if it's not already open, I can left click on video and turn off the transition. So now let's go ahead and play it again. So if you want to see any of the settings for a video transition and you want to edit them, you can left click on the transition. So you're clicking on the white box, not the clip itself or the clip on the right either. And then in the inspector top right hand corner, you can come down here to transition and you can see adjustable settings about that transition. So for instance, I can go to ease, do ease in and out. You'll see that it kind of creates a curve here and ease in and out means it's gonna start slow, it's gonna end slow, but it's gonna be fast in the middle. So let's play it again and see how that changes, how that transition looks. And then let's try it again without the ease curve. So without an ease curve, it's a completely linear speed. It just progresses from start to finish at a consistent speed. So another option here is the alignment. So as you can see, this transition is sitting right on the middle between two clips, but if you want to push this to the left side so it will start a little bit earlier, you can make it left aligned. So now it's completely on the left side clip. And uh, once it gets to here, the transition is already completely finished, or you can do the right alignment, which is going to make it start on this right side clip. And now it's going to do that transition over that one second period, you can of course adjust the duration, which automatically is going to adjust the number of frames based on your timeline speed. So whatever your FPS times your seconds should give you your frames here. Or you can change the transition type with this drop down menu, but usually I don't prefer to do that. So right now I'm going to make sure I'm left clicking on that cross dissolve transition. I'm going to command or control X to remove it. I'm going to go into the effects menu and I want to show you how you can actually hover over a transition to preview what it's going to look like with your clips. So I'm going to left click on this line here and I'm going to go over here and just kind of scrub through the effect. So we can see our cross dissolve there, but let's go up to blur dissolve. So by going from the start here to the end, just kind of moving this line along, we can see how the transition is going to look like from start to finish if we added it to the timeline with the default settings. And you can scroll down on the menu and see some of the other transitions. So Iris is going to have a shape that grows. And as that shape gets bigger, it's going to show more and more of the second clip. So there's a diamond Iris or a oval Iris there. You can go down further. So here we have motion effects, kind of looking like the first clip separates to reveal the second clip, or we can have push or slide moving one clip to the side. 
as it shows the other clip. And if we keep going down, you'll get to a section called Fusion Transitions. So Fusion Transitions are generally going to be the most advanced transitions out of the box in Resolve. And you can hover over them and kind of see how they're going to look. With these Fusion Transitions, usually they're kind of composed of multiple parts. So you can see with circles that it actually has multiple circles growing at different rates. Something like Noise Dissolve, it's got movement, but it's also got a blur on the border between the two clips. And as it goes down, that moving shape doesn't stay totally consistent in its shape. So if we add one of these to the clip, let's just try this noise dissolve over here. You may notice in the inspector that there's this button over here to go to the fusion settings for those fusion effects. So they're called fusion transitions because what makes the effect is completely editable on the fusion page, which is the next one at the bottom over here, uh, which is for node based effects. So let's just click this button in the inspector and jump over to the fusion effect. So in some of the fusion transitions, you'll just see a group box. So I'm going to close this group box and you'll notice it's a group because it has multiple layers here kind of going to the back. And if you double click on that, you can see all of the nodes. So each node is a different component of the effect. So we have a noise node, which in the inspector, I can click on or double click on to see customizable settings about that noise. And you can click on dissolve and then double click on the name of that node in the inspector. And you can also see uh, the settings here. Be aware that if it's be aware that if it has a red symbol, that means it's keyframed. So if you want to edit it, be aware that you have to edit multiple points in time uh, to make it look proper. But any of these nodes that make up a fusion transition are totally editable. So I could click down on this fast noise node. And once you expand all the settings, I could change the scale of it to make more smaller waves rather than a few big ones. So I'll take the scale and bump that up to around eight. And just with changing one parameter here, it's going to change how the transition looks. So let's go to frame zero up here in the preview timeline, hit play, and we can see how the transition changes just from that one setting. So if you want to know more about Fusion Node specifically, you can check some of my other videos on the Fusion page. But for right now, we're going to jump back to the edit page and just focus on transitions. So aside from dragging and dropping transitions from the effects window onto the border between two video clips, let me show you a quick way to add some transitions. First, I'm going to left click on this transition that we have there. I'm going to control X and remove it. And now what we want to do is right click on the border between these two clips and you'll see add 6 frame, 14 frame, 30 frame and 60 frame cross dissolve. So if you want a longer cross dissolve, you would choose more frames. So at 30 frames per second, a 30 frame cross dissolve is going to be a one second transition. And if I go back a little bit and I hit play, then you'll notice this is the same transition that we had at the start. Now I do want to show one extra way that this is pretty useful. So let me remove the transition again. And now I'm going to hit T to go to trim mode. I'm going to push back on both sides until we get back to that red line here, meaning we're at the end of the video footage. Let's do that on both sides. And now let's right click on the line between them. And you'll see that the option of adding a cross dissolve is still there. So if I add a 30 frame cross dissolve now, then you'll see that it will give us the option to trim the clips automatically, which is basically what we did manually. But now if I just hit trim clips, it's going to remove a little bit from both sides and automatically add that transition in. So that can just be a quick way of getting that simple transition from one clip to another even quicker. Now, as you can see, because the tracks are linked, it added not only the cross dissolve to the top, but also a crossfade for the audio channel to the bottom. So if I hit control Z, I can get around that by unchecking this linked selection. And now I'll just click on the border, but only on the video track here. You'll notice that there's no red line for the audio track. Add 30 frame cross dissolve, trim clips. And now we don't have it fading the audio if that's something you didn't want to have happen. Or if you already added them in, what you can do is uncheck linked selection and just click on the cross fade down here and control X to remove it. But this leaves the cross dissolve on top still there. One more trick I like to use, if we hover over the top right or top left corner of a video clip, you'll see these little white notches. So you can left click on them and pull them into one side, which is going to make it fade to black from where the notch is to the edge of the clip. So if I go here and I hit play, you'll see that we get a little fade to black there. So that can be helpful if we scroll all the way over to the start of the video clip and we just want to add like a 10 frame transition at the intro here. So I'll go to frame zero now. I'll hit play and there you have a little fade from black 
So if you do it at the end of a video clip like this, it's going to be a fade to black. It's just about the direction. Really what it's doing here is controlling the opacity of the video clip. So if I took these clips to another track and I was to go to effects and then I was to go to generators here and I took a solid color and put it under here. Let's click on the solid color, and now we can see in the inspector, we can select the color. Let's just choose something that's not black. So I'll just go for like a dark red here and hit OK. Then now if we play this effect, you'll see it kind of fades to red. Really what it's doing is hiding the top layer and anything below it can fade through. So if you needed it to fade to a different color than black, using the solid color generator is one way you can do that. Okay, so lastly, I want to just show where you find transitions in the cut page. Some people may prefer this way of editing. So on the cut page, you can see the layout is a little bit different, but it's still used for the main editing of your video clips. So transitions now are not in the effects menu, but actually up in the transitions menu at the top here. You left click on transitions, pops up over here. Should look very, very similar. It's just a slightly different layout. So if you want to add these transitions on the border between two clips, you can still drag them down like this. You can also use these alignment buttons to apply it at the edit point to the left or the right edge. So if I click apply to the edit point, you'll see that even though the timeline cursor isn't there, even though I didn't move my mouse there, it kind of automatically knows to put it at the nearest edit point. And so we get our transition there. So let's go ahead and hit play and test it. And on the cut page, they also have this dissolve button. So if you just want to add a simple cross dissolve from one clip to the other, that can quickly do that for you. Now note that that notch effect is still happening in addition to this transition. So you got to be careful. I'm going to take that notch and move it all the way back to the right. And now if we play this with the cross dissolve, it should look more normal again. It, there was also the notch on the right hand side. So let's move that to zero. Okay. And now we can play our cross dissolve and it should look completely normal. There's no opacity change thanks to the notches. So we just have a simple cross dissolve and we don't see the solid color from the background. And uh, if you want to remove that, of course, just delete your solid color from the video track one. If it wasn't obvious, whichever video is on the topmost layer shows on top of whatever is on the lower layer. So video three trumps video two trumps video one. So that in a nutshell is all the basics you really need to know about adding video transitions to your clips inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So I hope this video was helpful for all of you. Thank you for watching to the end. I've been Chris and I will see all of you in my future video content.